Well, 68 days, that is how many days slip by between the discovery on November 2nd of the classified documents in a locked closet in a private office building in downtown Washington, and January 10th, that's when President Biden said he was surprised and didn't know what was in the classified documents. And since then, well, crickets from the White House, not a peep. The White House is not talking. Instead, the press secretary says, talk to the Department of Justice. And as you might have guessed it, DOJ is saying nothing. So why the silent treatment? Well, according to a New York Times report, the White House stayed mum in that first 68-day window, hoping that the incident would blow over and not turn into anything bigger. The handful of White House advisors who reportedly knew about the initial discovery thought it best to keep it quiet. The New York Times reporting that the White House thought keeping it quiet might convince the DOJ that Biden's improper possession of the classified documents was a minor mistake. In other words, oops, sorry about that. But that's not how it has turned out. The advisors also hope to downplay what Biden did by pointing at former President Trump and saying Biden cooperated and Trump did not. But now we all know that strategy has not worked. In fact, the White House's silence has had the opposite effect. Attorney General Merrick Garland still appointed a special counsel to investigate further. News organizations unearthed and played and replayed the president displaying old-fashioned political hypocrisy. Here's President Biden on 60 Minutes talking about Trump having documents marked classified at Mar-a-Lago. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. And of course, the public backlash is increasing, which each day that passes. How long will the White House keep up this plan? Will it work in their favor in the end? Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law School and author of the book, The Price of Principle, Why Integrity is Worth the Consequences, Professor Alan Dershowitz joins me. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You know, the New York Times story is really very significant because it shows that the decision not to inform the public of the material was not a legal decision. It was a tactical political decision. It was a calculated decision to deny the public the ability to make its own judgment about the midterm elections, about uh, other matters for the time in which it was withheld. There is absolutely no justification for that. I mean, people say, well, the Justice Department was doing it well, the lawyers were telling us what to do it. No, we now know from insiders it was a tactical political decision designed to benefit Biden and benefit the administration. Now, were I as advisor, I'm, I might have made the same decision. I don't think so. I think I would have had it all spelled out there. But nobody should think that it was excusable on some legal grounds. And we now know that the only way they made the disclosure was after it was leaked by somebody else. And so I think there is some political explaining to do why the president doesn't, Trump the, doesn't trust the American public with information like this. All right. It, for, forever it's been that the Justice Department has not given out information about ongoing uh, investigations. That's not particularly new. It's been going on for decades. Right. But what is significant here is that there was at the White House gets covered by that. Rather than, rather than telling what happened, which is what you're talking about, is, it just, is what the White House says is, oh, it's in the hands of the Department of Justice. It's like handing, handing your lawyer the, you know, the, the gun so that you don't have to turn it over because now it's attorney-client privilege. No, it's worse than that because what the Biden administration was saying is this was nothing. This is nothing. There's no possibility of an investigation, no possibility of any any prosecution. So it wouldn't be proper for the Justice Department to withhold the information. They can't have it both ways. They can't say there was nothing to this at all. And on the other hand, it was so important uh, for the Justice Department to withhold comment or description of this. Uh, it seems to me that you have to understand this was purely Washington politics. It has nothing to do with the law. Do, do the people have a right to know? I mean, and should I mean, is there any obligation on the White House? Just tell us what happened. You know, give us the information, minus something if it were genuinely national security, but answer the questions and not just you know push it off on the Justice Department. 
you know, I think there is an obligation, and I think both parties have failed it. I think Donald Trump failed it as well. Um, he took at least a stance, a legal stance. He said, look, it's mine. I don't have to turn it over, et cetera, et cetera. But the Biden administration said, essentially, we know it was not proper. We think it was not a big deal. But we don't want to turn it over to the public because they may act on that. Well, they should have acted on that. I wouldn't have changed my vote as a Democrat in the midterm elections, but we're not there to judge whose votes will be changed. That always, transparency has to be the default position, the bottom line, unless there's a very good legal reason or national security reason for withholding it. Politics is never a good enough reason for withholding information. So how does it, okay, so the White House won't give the information out. If they say, well, you know, talk to the Justice Department, and the Justice Department says, well, we don't talk about an ongoing investigation, uh, what, you know, and what can the House of Representatives, as oversight of the government, do? And what can the, and what can the American people do as we watch this? Well, the House of Representatives, obviously, and the Senate have the right to make inquiry about this, but it shouldn't be political. It shouldn't be partisan. And the Justice Department should be absolutely sure that it's applying precisely the same rules of not cooperating, not disclosing information to a House committee as they would if it was a Democratic House committee. In fact, if I were the Attorney General, I'd appoint the Inspector General of the Justice Department, who's supposed to be more neutral, to make the decision or at least review the decision what gets turned over and what doesn't get turned over, so there isn't the appearance or suspicion of partisan considerations. Look, I understand the Justice Department's reluctance to deal with some of these folks on the Republican side, because clearly some of these guys are highly political, and they're going to use everything to their political advantage. But that doesn't mean the Democrats would have done the same, wouldn't have done the same thing. So I think we need an objective review to make sure that precisely the same standards and principles are being applied by the Justice do Department, you, not disclosing ongoing investigation for one side and the other. Has, do you think the Justice Department, the FBI, and the archives have been even-handed in terms of, you know, looking back at any information that we got that was leaked about uh, President Donald Trump? Have, have, they been the, have they done the same fair treatment with President Biden? No, no. I think the um, search warrant of the home um, was not justified. Um, and um, look, Garland tried to be as fair as possible. Having appointed a special counsel to investigate Trump, he appointed a special counsel to investigate Biden, even though I'm sure he knew nothing could come of it because the sitting president can't be indicted. He wants to be sure that the appearance of justice is satisfied. It's gonna be very hard to do once you've searched, once you've conducted a massive search of premises, which should never have been done. It should have been done by subpoena. Uh, it should have been done by other means. Even Garland announced that the Justice Department doesn't use subpoenas when there are other lesser intrusive methods. And I think that's where the problem begins. Professor Alan Dershowitz, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.